part one of this two-part video, we demonstrated how to make this fiberglass mold. Now we are ready to make our part out of the mold. Before we start, a safety reminder. When working with resins, always wear skin and eye protection. Work in a well-ventilated area away from open flame. Breathing protection might also be required. Let's first look closely at the mold. Here on the edges we have some pockets. These were caused by air bubbles that were not removed when we made the mold. These pockets will cause bumps on our part. If we were going to make lots of parts, it would pay to repair the mold by filling the pocket with gel coat and sanding then buffing the repair to match the rest of the hull. Since we will be making only one part, it is just as easy to repair the part when it comes out of the mold. The first step is to prepare the mold with mold release. We will use a combination of Pardol Paste Wax and PVA mold release. Using the Pardol Paste Wax, wax the mold as you would a car. Allow the wax to dry for a minute or two and remove with a soft cloth. Do not wait any longer or the wax will be difficult to remove. Repeat the process at least three times, waiting one to two hours between coats. While waiting for the wax to harden between coats, it is a good time to set up for our fabrics. We want to pre-cut any fabric we plan to use. We will use a combination of matte and modified twill fabric. The matte does not need to be pre-cut because we can just tear it into properly sized pieces. However, the cloth is much easier to cut prior to the addition of resin. Turn the mold upside down and drape the cloth over it. We are using modified twill because of its ability to conform to compound curves. You can recognize it by its apparent diagonal pattern. We will put the fabric over the hull and smooth it down and mark the perimeter. If a cut needs to be made to get the cloth to lie flat, now is the time to do it. Mark the fabric in some way so you will know the orientation when you apply it later. To more easily support the mold, we have cut out a matching hole in a cardboard box. Now we are ready to apply the PVA to the mold in the same way we did with the original part. Spray a light film with the pre-valve sprayer, followed by another light film. Allow it to dry completely. Now we are ready to apply gel coat. We will use white gel coat, but we could use pigment with neutral gel coat to create any color we choose. Catalyze the gel coat according to the instructions. Stir well. In part one, we used a cup gun to apply the gel coat. Since we are not creating precision part, there is another way to apply gel coat that does not require equipment. All we need to do is pour the gel coat into the mold and rotate the mold to evenly coat it. Try not to get any on the flange. You can use a brush to help control the direction of the flow. Once it is entirely coated, vibrate the mold to remove the excess. Gel coat that is too thick will shrink and possibly crack or pull away from the mold. Once coated, set the mold aside and allow the gel coat to cure. After 45 minutes to a few hours, depending on the temperature and catalyst ratio, the gel coat has cured enough to move to the next step. In this step, we apply the resin and fabric. We will use Bond Coat Laminating Resin because it has a relatively long working time and is economical. Create a workspace near the mold using a plastic bag or some other disposable surface. Mix up the resin according to the directions and wet out pieces of mat on the work surface. Then apply them in an overlapping pattern being careful to cover the entire surface. Allow the mat to extend above the edge but not to bend over onto the flange. We will come back and trim it off later when it reaches the right level of cure. Ensure that there are no trapped air bubbles. They will leave the gel coat unsupported and cause it to crack, exposing cavities in the hull. As in part one, note that we are dabbing with a brush and not stroking the mat. For this size part, the small disposable rollers work well too. There is no need to wait for the first layer to cure before moving on to the next. Now we will lay in the modified twill fabric. This can be tricky and is often easier with a second set of hands. 
We could wet the fabric out first, however laying it in dry allows it to soak up excess resin from the mat. This is far easier than trying to scrape out excess resin, which adds weight and is prone to cracking. If your part requires more strength, continue to add layers of reinforcement. Since this is our final layer, we will add surface curing agent to the catalyzed resin, and this will allow the entire surface to cure tack free. Once complete, wait for the resin to cure. Check the resin every 15 minutes or so. At some point, it will gel to a leathery stage that is flexible, but cured enough to hold the fiberglass fibers together. At this stage, take a sharp razor knife and slice off the excess material around the edge. If you try this too soon, the fabric will shred. Wait too long, and you will need a grinder. Once trimmed, allow the part to fully cure. Once cured, it is time to remove the part from the mold. Use a plastic or wood wedge of some kind to break the bond around the edges. Do not use metal, which might scratch the part or the mold. Using a little bit of leverage, your part should pop right out of the mold. The green PVA is easily washed off with water, and your finished part is complete. Let me make one final comment. Before attempting a project of any size or with irreplaceable parts, experiment on a small scale to learn the behavior of the products. Jet plastics, the fantastic plastic